Hey guys, just want to send out a few quick reminders on our conversions as you study those this weekend. Um, remember, main thing to remember are two rules. Our two rules saying that one side of our proportion must be our known, the other side must be the unknown. Um, the unknown, guys, remember is always the question being asked. So, for instance, and just doing an example, if I had the, um, say if I had 14 pounds, and I want to know what that is in kilograms. Remember, this entire thing is part of my unknown. I know that, yes, it, it's the kilograms that we don't know, but technically we don't know how many kilograms are in 14 pounds. So that's why that entire thing must be one side of our proportion. The other side is what we find in our chart. Don't forget that you guys are going to need to memorize that chart for your quiz on Monday. Um, so keep that in mind as you all are studying this weekend too. So in using this one as practice, again, your this entire question is going to be one side of our proportion. So out of habit, like I said, that's what I usually do first is I write down the unknown because it's right there in front of me. So I'm going to go ahead and put that down. 14 pounds over X amount of kilograms. So again, that's my one side. That's my, my 14 over x. That's my one fraction as in what, that's what I mean by one side of your proportion. The other side is what we're going to where we're going to put our known and again that's what we're going to get from our chart. Um, so we you know in, in practicing that and in memorizing that we know that there are 2.2 pounds for every one kilogram. That being said that's where rule number two comes in. Rule number two says that our units must match. Meaning, what's on top on the unknown side, which you guys can see as pounds, that's also going to go on top of our known side. Um, and that was our 2.2. If you guys recall, we know 2.2 pounds for every 1 kilogram. And again, as you all see, that 1 kilogram is on the bottom. I mean, I'm sorry, my X amount of kilograms is on the bottom of my unknown side. So therefore, my 1 kilogram must go on the bottom of the known side. So now I've got it set up. And again, both, both my rules have been followed. One side of my proportion is my unknown, which was this guy right here, the question being asked. The other side was my known. Again, that's what we know about pounds and kilograms. That needs to go together. So 14 and X has to go together because they're both part of the question. So there they are on one side of my proportion. 2.2 and 1 must go together on one side of my proportion because they're both part of the known. So there they are on the one side. Now that we've got it set up, we also have our units matched up so we can see pounds are on top, pounds are on top, kilograms are on bottom, kilograms are on bottom, so we're good. Um, so now that we've got those set up, now we must go and solve this. So if you guys remember in solving proportions, what we do is we look for our x, x you guys can see is right here, so therefore what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply the opposite side first. So I cross multiply 14 times 1, which we know gives us 14. Then I take that answer and divide by my last number that I have left over. The only two numbers I have left that I haven't used yet are x and 2.2. So I'm going to divide by the 2.2. And 14 divided by 2.2, I'll just write it up here at the top, is 6.36. So that's my answer. 14 pounds equals 6.36 kilograms. So that would be our proportion. Let's do another one. So let me see. Let me get all this out of the way here. Um, takes a lot of deleting. Okay, so let's do another example. Let's say we have, oh, I don't know. Let's say we have uh, 27 milliliters, and I want to know what that is in teaspoons. Kind of random. I don't know. Um, 27 milliliters equals blank amount of teaspoons. So again, this entire question right here, the 27 milliliters and the X amount of teaspoons, that entire thing is one part of our unknown. So that I'm going to go ahead and put together on one side. So I'll write it as 27 milliliters over X amount of teaspoons. So therefore, when I go to set up the known, whatever that might be, I know that milliliters needs to go on top and teaspoons needs to go on the bottom because that's how I have it set up on the unknown side. So as I'm first getting used to this chart and I'm getting, you know, getting to know it, I don't have my chart in front of me. I just, again, because I've done these so many times, I have these 
memorized now. Um, and I know that there are five milliliters for every one teaspoon. So therefore my five will go on top and my one will go on the bottom of that known side. So once again I've got the two rules followed. First side is my unknown, my other side is my known. So my unknown being the 27 and the X and the known being the 5 and the 1 that we received from the, from the chart, eventually from our memory. Um, so now we go to solve this. So when I go to solve this, I need to first again go the opposite side of our X. So I'm going to take 27 times 1, which we know is 27. I'm going to take that and then divide by 5, which will give me another decimal. It gives me 5.4. So for, for 27 milliliters, my answer is 5.4 teaspoons. All right, we're feeling pretty good with that. Uh, let's try one more before we move on. Let's say we have uh, just a different example. Let's say we have, oh, whoops. Let's say we have six uh, tablespoons. So this abbreviation is a little bit different. Six tablespoons, and I want to know what that is in teaspoons. So we have to know our known for tablespoons to teaspoons, but again, right there in front of us, we have our unknown. So let's go ahead and let's write that down first, and I'm going to put this up here at the top. And I'm just going to use just letters because it will save me some space on my screen here. Uppercase T represents tablespoons because tablespoons are larger. Um, lowercase t would represent teaspoons, just in case you guys ever run across that. I will always use on your all's quizzes and stuff, I, if I use abbreviations, I'll use TBSP for tablespoons and just TSP for teaspoons. Just kind of keep that in mind. But just for um, area purposes that I have on my um, screen here, we're just going to use the letters. So I have six tablespoons over X amount of teaspoons. So that's, again, together on one side of my proportion because that's my unknown. Other side, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that whenever, whatever my known might be, tablespoons must go on top, teaspoons must go on bottom. So in looking at that and figuring out what is my known for tablespoons to teaspoons, well, actually, for every one tablespoon, I have three teaspoons. So I'm going to go ahead and put that down. You guys see how I wrote that down? I've got tablespoons across from tablespoons, teaspoons across from teaspoons. But together on one side of that proportion is this guy right here, my unknown, my question being asked. The other side is what I have from the chart, what I know about that. So that's, what I, that's why I had to put one and three on the same side. So when we go to solve this, just like always, I go to cross multiply the side opposite of my x. So I'm going to multiply six times 3, which we know 6 times 3 is 18. 18 then divided by 1 would still be 18. So 6 tablespoons, guys, would be 18 teaspoons. All right. Well, let's go ahead and that's, so that's our proportions in a nutshell. If you guys have any questions about that as you are studying, please, please, please don't hesitate to call me or email me. Um, email again, probably the best bet because that's going to be the quickest way to reach me, and I will gladly answer any questions that you guys have about these conversions. Well, let's go ahead and now let's talk about our military time. I don't think anybody had too many questions about that military time, but just kind of going through it really quickly, just to remind you, don't forget the difference between military time and our standard time is our standard clock is a 12-hour clock that goes around once in a day. And we know what that looks like. That looks like this. Excuse my drawing, but it's, it's going to be terrible. Um, this is our standard clock. Hang on. 5 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 7, 8, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. I know that's a terrible clock, but anyway, you get the idea. So what happens is in a 12-hour day, I mean, I'm sorry, in a 24-hour day, our clock goes around twice. Mil military clock is a little bit different. Their clock is a... 24-hour clock. 